welcome. This is Afshin Ratansi and Yvonne Ridley joining you from on board HMS President broadcasting from the heart of a cold English capital. Yes, from the world's only floating TV studio, we bring you a show which puts Western journalism under the microscope and asks if the media really matters. This guest is certainly not holding his breath for any coverage of the new US-based movement which is attracting disaffected black youth in the United Kingdom. And this legendary journalist, who has been seen and done just about everything with bullets and bombs thrown in, climbs on board to tell us about a guidebook to global reporting he's just written. Meanwhile, I caught up with a host of journalists who arrived in London to discuss the state of the media business. Plus, this Brussels-based writer talks about media matters, the Middle East and Europe's alliance with the Zionist state. And there's much, much more, so stay tuned to the show which rocks the boat. Well, students are back in the news again after yet another peaceful demonstration turned into a night of violence. It's hard to know if the media is helping or hindering their cause. But where would we be without the media? Our next guest is the legendary Mort Rosenblum. He's been seen and done it all as a journalist, but now he fears that the days of the foreign correspondent are nearly over. Mort Rosenblum, are things really that bad? Well, you know, they're not bad in terms of the actual numbers. There's probably more eyeballs and fingers out there than ever, but that doesn't mean we're getting very good coverage. Um, all these new tools and these new people, you can get things instantly, but it also means we can get things wrong at the speed of light. So my message in, in this little book I've done is that you, you wonderful that we have these new tools, wonderful that you have these new possibilities. Yes, start new people up. No, it doesn't, it's not about old guys like me. But you need the traditional values, the traditional tenets. The, you have to be a, the idea of a citizen journalist, you don't want a citizen surgeon removing your gallbladder. This is really a profession. And do you think that's, what ha that, that's what's happening where citizen, sorry, I'm shouting over the noise of a helicopter, but do you think that that's what's happening where ordinary people are Facebooking, blogging, twittering, and, and sending reports to newspapers themselves. Well, two things are happening. One, the, the owners of news organizations are discovering that it's so much cheaper to hire or just engage an intern and not pay them, or have somebody just starting out who doesn't talk back, who doesn't, you know, doesn't, you know, is pretty eager to climb up and not have to deal with old guys like me that cost more and, and argue and insist on saying what we actually see. And you have to, to report. You have to be there. You have to actually go to the story. You have to know the background. You have to speak the language. You have to find sources. You have to feel that you know to, to duck. You have to get you know, and you and this takes you know you don't have to be old, but it takes time and training, and that's expensive. And so that's one thing. The other thing is you've got a lot of people starting out saying, "Oh, great! I got a iPod. I got a camera. I got a this. I got a. I'm a journalist. Cool." Well, you know, give a guy a scalpel, as I say, doesn't make him a surgeon. We talk a lot on this program about how media representations of so many stories, certainly in the corporate news, is, is usually completely wrong. I know you mentioned Fox News in the book yeah. and Fair and Balanced uh, right, right. as their watchwords. Do you not feel that uh, some of the blame for the poor reporting is also the Academy itself? Oh, absolutely. No question. I mean, there's a lot of people to blame, but like everything. And, and you don't get anywhere when you start using these four-letter collective pronouns. You know, like they, I was just reading a story or talking about seeing something online about the Chinese, they. That's a billion people, pretty big, you know, the Muslims, you know, um, America. The international community. The international the community, one. for example. Well, here's a really good example. Okay, a year and a half ago in Tehran, okay, you know, all this stuff in the streets, you know, Aganita Sultan gets out this beautiful passionario standing by her car. Okay, well, in World War One, you know, Archduke Duke Franz Ferdinand gets stabbed in Sarajevo and it takes people a couple of weeks to get going. So here, a billion people see this. They see the images, they see her fall, they see the whole thing. Everybody says, oh, Islamic revolution. Oh, look, it's all changing. And that's their Florida. That's hanging chads. It's about elections. It's not, you know, as you well know, it's not about, you know, changing Islam. It's about changing politics. But what about um, bias? Because I know that... Uh, uh, I've, I've actually spoken up to people saying, yeah. you are biased, maybe you should embrace your bias so when you come to a story, realize your own prejudices rather than trying yeah. to be impartial. I, I have a, a chapter that starts out in this book that says, uh, I can't remember what, how I said it, but I said, that, you know, your ideal byline is, you know, O. Goldberg, you know, McSweeney, Gonzalez, you know, Wong, you know, because, you know, we're all people of the book. People see my name, um, I write about Israel, 
you know, somebody says, uh, oh, you're a self-hating Jew. And I say, no, no, you're, you know, I'm not the Jew I hate. You know, I mean, I'm not for or against Israel. I'm not for or against America. I'm not for or against anything. I'm a professional reporter. And yeah, there's bias, but we come back to the pronouns. You know, who's a reporter? Um, you know, you, you fair and balanced, it's too bad it got hijacked because it has some use, that, 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 that phrase. But it's a moving target. You know, it's professional. You put forward a very good argument uh, for the case of having foreign, cor foreign correspondents out there, but the reality is the cost of getting somebody with your experience into a war zone and all that that entails. And this, the, the accountants are looking at this now. The cost of the Iraq war was $4 trillion for the Americans alone, probably a half a million Iraqis, God knows how many, everything else, and a world has been screwed up for the next five generations. I mean, is it too much to pay a guy a salary to go look at this and stop it? Well, let's hope the newspaper well. publishers are listening. Thank Thanks. you very much for Thank coming you, in. Everyone.